Hello guys, I'm Andalus here. Today we will talk about fluids in 3ds Max. In 2018, they introduced fluids, a very capable solver for fluid simulation based on Bifrost. And a lot of people I saw online that they are still asking for real flow or phoenix for do very basic stuff. If you need to do splashes or a waterfall or a liquid filling a glass, it's perfectly fine and it's very good. You don't need plugins for that. So let's see how we will do it. I will create first the fluid uh, object. I will go to create fluids and let's create a liquid. Drag and drop. You have the liquid there. Now you need to go to simulation, simulation view. It will open a simulation view that you can place wherever you want. I can pause this here together with a command panel so you can switch between them. It's kind of like neat. And right now, if we click play, it will work. You will need to wait a little. I will emit from this sphere, as you can see, and it's emitting and falling down. So kind of a stride forward. But what we want to do is that we have this scene. If you are one of my patrons, you can download this scene. If not, anyways, you can... I prepared it a little, but you can go to Sketchfab. I will have the link below and you will be able to download this model on FBX. If you are one of my patrons in Patreon, I will have this file, what I have right now here, as well as the final result. So we would like to have water here below on this hexagon and this object will interact and as well the fan will push water around and we will see how to do the interaction with, the, um, with this, with the fans and the water. So first, Let's see some of the parameters that we can tweak. Here on liquid attributes, you can add all objects. First, we need to start with colliders. I will add this as a collider. You can pick it if you want. And as well, I will add all these legs. You don't need to add all the objects because it will not interact. As less objects you have interacting, faster will go the simulation. What you can do is do add. And the add, I found a bug. For some reason, it's not working. Uh, what you can do is Add it there as a robot collider. Press add. Now we have a selection set there and it's selecting them. So here we have it. We need to load this as a liquid. Right now we are emitting from the sphere. Icon type a sphere, it's our emitter icon. If you switch this to custom, now we have a new panel here. You can pick our water. And let's hide this. Now let's go inside the settings of that. If you go to solver parameters, first we have frame range, it will use the timeline. Then very important is the solver properties. The voxel size defines the resolution of your solver. It's a flip solver, it's based on Bifrost, so it's based on a, on a voxel size. A smaller values, better quality, slower simulation times. Let's go to one. At the beginning you will start bigger and then you will go lower as you have more resolution. And very important, liquid parameters. You have a list of presets. It's quite cool because you have ketchup, you have milk, you have all types of things. You can check a video done by Martin, very cool about all these presets and looks very realistic. You will see it right now playing on the background. You can see the quality that they reach and it's using these presets. On this case, I will use water that is there. It's the default. To apply a preset, you need to Click there and it will be applied. And then caching, it's important to set the caching. I have my C drive, it's quite full, so I will switch the final path. And instead of using the project folders, that is what it's using, I will turn this off and I will go to my D. You don't need to see that. I will switch the folder and all set. So right now, when this emits, it will emit constantly. To change that in an emitter object, you can make this bigger. On emitter object, we have emit type as emitter. This means that we'll keep emitting. If you have a fontaine, this will be good, but we only want to have it as a container, so it will emit only once. You click play. So we can see that it's already interacting and it's quite fast. For display settings, you can go there, display settings, and you have opacity, you have size. Reducing the size, Sometimes can be better. Now we are displaying vorticity. I like to change the color to white to make it to have more contrast so we can see what's going on there. And instead of displaying vorticity, you can display velocity or whatever value. 
you will see that it changed on the viewport and you can change colors as well. But we have this interacting and working as we expect. Really important that your geometry is tight and watertight so you don't have open edges because what is doing any flip solver basically is creating an STL from any geo and if your geometry is not close cannot work. I can see that right now here it's trying to do something and it's colliding somehow but I saw that the geometry is quite bad. I import this model and it's something that you should do at the beginning all the time. So how I do it is I go, I select one object, I apply an STL check, do a check and you see errors. That means that it's not watertight and we have some problems. One easy way to do it, let's select with selection sets what we select before and let's add a cap. Cap holes, it's quite possible that we'll fix most of our problems. So let's try it again in top. Let's do an STL check again. Let's do a check, no errors. And you can try with different geometry. STL check, check, no errors. So now it's good. Now we can resimulate. So it's very important that you do that. It's as when I say that there were some delimitations in the solver of Bifrost, this is one of them. I cannot check the STL generated by, by fluids. It's something in our solver, for example, a storm doing some publicity. If you need to do a grain solver or SPH, check it out. Effective technical directors, uh, it's a great solver. But, and we can display the, the STL and it's very helpful because you can see if the deflector is failing because the STL is not well created. We have no way to see it on simulation view. You can see that here you add your objects, but that's all. Uh, so it's one of the limitations, I would say, Fluids has. And it's a big limitation. The solver is really good, but it has these small things. So now the, the other thing that we want to do is that we want that these fans interact with the water. And that will, cool, will be very cool, actually. So we need to go to Command Panel. We need to use a force. Now, they introduced with 2018 as well motion fields. Motion fields doesn't work only with fluids, it works with cloth, it works with any particle system, particle flow, thinking particles, it works with meshes, you can deform meshes, and it's very cool. It's a substitute of all the rest, and basically it's better, and click and drag, you will see this icon. You can do things like boundaries, so right now it only will be a plate on inside the boundary. You have drag, you have turbulence and noise, and the cool thing is that you can display it. So now we have this display. If you choose turbulence and noise, and then you go to the turbulence and noise setup, there, magnitude, you can change the frequency, for example, and you will start seeing things happening. Let me turn off the direction. You can see now a representation of what this noise will do, and it's pretty sweet because you see, you have a, an idea of what's going on. So by now I want a direction. I want that this push down. So let's add minus one on Z and zero on X. So the force is pushing down and it will be linked to this object there. So I will check for a frame that it's more or less flat, like here. And let's move this there. And I will link it to this object. So now when I move around, this will be moving and it will interact and I hope that will be looking cool. Now we have as well as a bonding shape a box, it will be more suitable for that a cylinder. I think that will be better. Something like that. I will make sure that it's on the center. Right now it's not totally centered, something like that. I will go with radius, a bigger radius. I want a big area to be affected because remember that the wind is never going straight. It will spread. Maybe 24 is too big. Let's go to 22. And as well, you have fall off. And the fall off, you will see that it's visible there. You can see it there. We'll see that these lines are smaller than the center ones. Let's increase it even more. You can see it. And make this height bigger. 
So we are sure that we are affecting this area. First, I would like to have something pushing on this direction, following the direction of the fan. But as well, we can add different types of forces. We can add, for example, an around axis and away from axis. That we will see this right now. Now on simulation view, liquid attributes, we need to select this force. We will go to motion fields and let's pick this force. You can pick any type of force. Doesn't need to be only motion fields, can be wind, gravity, whatever. Let's start with one and then we will duplicate on the other fan. And we don't need to do anything else, simply press play. We can resume or restart, let's restart. And not much is happening. Uh, one cool thing about Fluids in Max is that it's simulating on the background, so you can still work normally, you can edit, you can move objects. Um, that's quite cool and neat, I think. And we don't see much things happening. Let's stop that. And on simulation, on common panel, let's tweak the magnitude, should be bigger. Let's go to 15. And again, simulation view, play, restart. Now we start seeing something. I think that display settings, if I go to display vorticity, we will see better that something is happening there. It's actually pushing, we can see it there. We have some interaction there, but this is being pushed. It's really working. Maybe it's too much because we will see that now all this force will go there. But actually we can see that it's working. We don't want this going so crazy. But we have the idea of what it's doing. So now let's go back to modify panel. We will turn this a little down, like four, and turn it off. Let's see what will happen with a long axis. It's good to see different parameters on each one. A long axis is not what we need. Around axis, yes. It will create a turbulent. It's kind of a motor on 3ds Max. It will circle around. And because this is a fan, can make a lot of sense. Let's go with one and see and see what this is doing. So it's working, but maybe a little too crazy. We can see that it's spreading the water around, but actually it's doing something pretty cool here. I was thinking that maybe we will need a wave from axis that will push it outwards, but really we don't need that because we already, this already around axis is pushing backwards. Maybe we can do, do this negative. So negative will push, maybe can be a good idea actually. So, because we like the spreading, but not so much. And this will try to push inside a little. And let's reduce a little around axis because I saw that it's too big. So it's a good idea at the beginning when you play with the parameters to do it in a low res settings as we are seeing here, because it makes more sense. You can iterate faster. At the end, when we work on films, we need to iterate as fast as possible to be able to fine tune what we need and arrive to the result that we need faster. So going low res doesn't, will not make any difference if now we increase res resolution too much. The only thing is that we will wait more time to see the results. And remember, I am on a laptop. Uh, that's a good because people will say that this is too slow. And uh, let me, I have four cores. And yeah, it's a pretty old laptop. It cost me $500. I always say this on my videos, but it's actually, I am quite proud. I, I bought this laptop secondhand uh, for $500. I just increased the RAM to 32 gigs to be able to do more stuff. But yeah, uh, if you go a Threadripper or not even a Threadripper, but one of the new AMDs with 16 cores, this will go four or five times faster. Actually, Fluid scales very well. And as you can see, I am using, oops, sorry. It's using almost 100% of the, well, it's using 87% of the CPU. 
it, it jumps, but it's actually pretty good. And it scales very well. If you have more cores, it will keep using the same. Memory, I am using 10 gigs, so it's important to check the memory consumption so you don't go too, too crazy. Uh, let's see that. Uh, so as well, it's still too crazy. I don't want the water to go too much, too much out. So another thing that we can do is to reduce this radius a little because maybe now it's too big. It's affecting too much area. We will go to 18. It's always a matter of fine tuning until you get the, the results that you want. 16 maybe will be good. Away from axis, I will go even less. So it's pushing inwards. So it will try to spread less. And let's reduce these values because I see that it's going too crazy. So I will go to 0 0.3. And let's keep this at 0 point like it is right now. Simulation view, play and restart. I am interested in finding a circulation of water. So it's turning around. I think that this will be pretty neat. And the other thing that we didn't do yet is that we will animate as well these values. Uh, so right now the force is constant, but as you saw, this vehicle at the beginning, it's kind of a sleeping and then it's turning on and it starts, the fan it starts to work. So we will animate these values over time. The thing I can do is adjust this time range, control alt and right click, adjust it something like there. I don't want to simulate all that. It's only to see the, the simulation, how it's going on. Something I didn't say is that before doing that, I was trying to do that in 3ds Max 2018. I can see that on 2020, it's way, way faster, the fluids. Uh, also, everything is much more responsive. I was trying to do this of moving the time uh, time range while simulating. It was so slow. And 2020, it's way, way faster. Also, the simulation or the viewport display, I can see a big difference. I don't know exactly why they did, but it works well. So if you are in 2018, update, because even if you have fluids, 2020 is much better. Let's stop this. And you can play. Another cool thing is doing 3ds Max. Uh, check it out in real time. Uh, that's because it's saving everything in RAM. So it doesn't load from the hard drive. It's loading from the RAM. And yeah, it, we are having something that I kind of like. Uh, we have this turbulent stuff going on. We can exaggerate it maybe even more. And the last thing I would like to do, let's do that first. Command panel, select, modify. So we are around axis. Let's increase that at 0 0.4. And we saw that this force inwards, it helps to keep the liquid not spreading too much. So we can go to 0 point, uh, 45, it's good. And then I would like to have a directional force. So it push the liquid on this way. And let's keep it to four or let's keep it to, yeah, let's go to three. And we will see how this is going. And if it's good, we will duplicate this to the other place, animate it, and go full res. It's really important. Let's go into helpers. And I will create here a plane. Doesn't need to be specific, something like that. Now, when we go on to simulation view, liquid, we have kill planes. You can have this plane on any direction. It basically will kill particles on the plane. Make sure that you don't kill particles that you don't want. So put this plane lower so it doesn't keep computing forever. We can turn this off. This is on fluids. I will, well, yeah, let's keep it like that. So now final touches of this simulation. We need to animate this. So at the beginning, we see that it's, a, it's not doing anything. So it will be cool that this is at zero, magnitude zero. Let's turn auto. And if we play here, it's moving a little. We can do something, influence the water somehow. So let's add a kit here. 
And since here it's moving a little, I will add a 0 0.03, like something very subtle. You can see it on the viewport that it's really something to derube a little the water. Then here we'll go to stop again. Here it's moving again. Something like that. Stopping again. And we can see that it's a stop for a while. And then here it's going full speed. So, um, and we say that we don't want one because it was a little too much. So let's keep it at 0 0.7. And that's all. Now let's keep, let's simulate as much as we want. It's a very long simulation and I don't think I will do everything. But I will do it until 600, 600 frames is quite a lot for my poor laptop. So, yeah, I will simulate and I will... I will stop the video because it will be a little too long and then we will see the final... Oh, no, sorry. It's good that I say that. Um, we want to increase the resolution. To increase the resolution, it's good. You can move this to see this grid. The grid defines the resolution. So it's important that we go there and on simulation parameters, we change this. I will say 0 0.25 will be quite good or 0. Point, let's go 0 0.22, I like numbers that are not odd. And what you can see to see how many particles you have, because it will depend on how big it is, if we simulate, you will see on display settings, the number of particles on viewport and render. Uh, so now it's computing the first frame. Let's turn off water. The first frame will take a little more because it's need, needing to recreate the SDF of this deflector and the, the animated deflectors. And here we are, we are with 4 million particles. So it's good. 4 million, I mean, yeah, with a bigger computer I will do more. <laughs> but let's see how this goes. I will stop the video and see the result later and we will mesh this. Well, so I simulate quite a lot and I found another mistake. That's why you, I, you shouldn't simulate with full res from the beginning. We have some nice stuff going on here, but I think that the velocity should be bigger. That's one way. And you will see that we are losing some particles because it's going through, but some particles are going down as well. You can see that every time we have less and less particles here and you can go to display settings, you will see that the number is decreasing over time, even nothing is going uh, through. Here at the end, we don't have particles almost. And that's because on Solver's parameter, there is two elements that you should know. One is delete exceeding part. Another thing that can help avoiding this volume loss is keep the delete exceeding particles, because if not, it will accumulate over time and to increase the time steps. Time steps is how many times it's calculated per frame. So I will go to six and minimum time steps, keep it to one. So if it's needed because there is big velocities and we have a strong forces here, this will go to six steps. Then if you increase adaptivity to 0 0.5 or 0 0.6, it will be easier for the solver to go to a higher max time steps and will help to have more accurate simulations. Be careful because this is time consuming as well, but you will avoid the volume loss. And this, the volume loss is happening when you have long sims. Normally we work in production with 100 frames, 200 frames, and you will never see this volume loss. But if this is the case, like now, turn the, increase that. I am playing at five frames per second. Without OBS, I am playing this at almost 20. I display the dot, the dots quite big. So I don't have problems with compression on YouTube. And you can see here the simulation. We have something quite nice. There is a nice rotor here going on. Now we don't have the liquid loss of volume. We will have some volume loss because now a lot of liquid is going outside. But you can see that we are having cool stuff. And also I increase a little the force. So the scale, I think it's better. 
Now, what will be the next steps? The next steps will be to create foam and to create a mesh. To create a mesh, let's go to a frame that you like. Let's say this one. You will deactivate the create uh, liquid because it's already created. Here, we will create foam, but now first, and this will, will, you will create mesh. And to create mesh, you click play and it will simulate it and save it onto disk. But I never do that because it takes a lot of space. And there is a better thing. You can go to display settings and instead of point, use Bifrost Dynamic Mesh. Bifrost Cache Mesh will read the, ca the cache if it's there. Right now there is nothing. But if you do dy Dynamic Mesh, it will try to, to create a mesh on the fly. So without saving anything on disk. So here you have the mesh. And it's pretty... I mean, I think that the mesh on fluids is one of the best that you will found around. Seriously, it's really good. I like it more than Frost. I like it more than almost any measure out there. It's really good. Uh, you can tweak parameters here, like radius, droplet radius, smoothing, resolution. I don't know what is the resolution of that. I think it, it's quite good. We could increase a little more resolution, but by default, look at that. It's quite nice. I like it. It creates a very nice shapes. I simply love it. We will need to set this to Arnold to render. Let's keep everything by default. And when you create a material, Press M. I have a lot of... That's a material from the drone. I will create a new view. Material, general, physical material. To apply a material, you simply drag and drop on this mesh. And this, in fact, is using a multi-sub object material. So I will do it right. What I will do is duplicate this. I will create a multi-sub object. So it's using basically two sub objects. The first one is the liquid, and the second one will be for the foam. We don't have foam right now, but whatever. So we'll go to the base color reflections, turn it to totally black, or put a slight blue, like that. Transparency, we want it, and that's all. I think that we can try and remember to apply this to the material. I don't know if this was applied. Now we can see that it's transparent. So now let's render and see what, what this does. So with the very basic settings, you can see that we have a very nice result. Look at the details. I think it's really nice. I don't have motion blur activated, but this will help with this stuff. And even if we didn't have so many particles there, the meshing is doing an excellent job on these areas. And you can see a lot of detail going on there. I think it's pretty cool. Uh, on render settings, you have different channels that you can save. You can save more channels. Age, Eric Chang. So you can expose this uh, as an OSL map and modify the material based on these settings. Pretty cool. So I will turn Bifrost Dynamic Mesh back to points. And let's simulate it. We need to tick this one. That's for foam. You will see it. Solve foam component. We have the foam parameters. And you have different modes, basic or advanced, just basic by default. Advanced particles has kind of an SPH. You can use advanced if you want. Let's try it. Emission rate, how many particles you want to emit. So increasing this, you will have more particles. Then this defines when the particles will be generated. So the particles needs to be at least 0.2 velocity to be emitted which churn you want to be emitted. So lowering this, you will have more particles. Let's try 0.7. Also the minimum curvature that you want to emit foam. So bigger values will mean that you will need more curvature to be emitting. So you will be emitting less. With less values, you will emit more particles or faster. Minimum liquid depth, max liquid, you can leave this by default. Emit flatness to surface, um, if you want that the particles stay on the surface. Then this is if you want, this creates kind of an SPH system on your particles. I think it's explained there. Yeah, it's kind of creating an SPH. So that's more advanced and it will take a little more time. Uh, let's turn it off by default. It will create interaction between particles as well. If you want to snap the particles to the foam, if you want to add wind to the foam, that's pretty cool. It will create some drag to the particles and as well, yeah, you can have wind. So maybe you want a wind that doesn't affect the liquid as much, but yes, the foam because it has less mass. And if you want to add some turbulence, I think, yeah, you can add some, some of this. 
low values. And when you are ready, you simply press play. And it says that the liquid is not complete because I guess that I increase this too much. So it will not allow you to do foam if you have frames that there is no liquid there. Simply change the display limit to, for example, 400, 500. That is where I have simulation. Press OK. And now let's press play again. And now it will allow to simulate. So foam is done. One thing I did is increase emission rate because I didn't have enough. And something I will do if I do a second pass, always remember more iterations you keep improving, is that the dissipation rate is too big for now. So reducing this dissipation rate will mean that the particle foam life longer. If you don't know if you need to reduce or increase for one effect, you will have a tooltip if you stay there and it will say so. So I will keep this at two to get longer foam. Now on display settings, right now it looks kind of like not really good. Uh, so we didn't see that, but on water and on foam, we have different stuff. You, you have different display types. You have different color channels to display. Right now by static means one single color, you can change it. You have opacity and size. If it's a static, it's one value, but you can change it. For example, for opacity it will make sense to use density. And you can define opacity mean and opacity max. By default, you will have zero and one. Opacity mean, it means when it, it's born, I will put this at 0 0.7, or you can, you can see what it's doing. If I increase to two, you will see that it's very opaque at the beginning. At 0 0.7, so it's always a little transparent and it's fading away over time. And size channel, the same. If you want, you can say as well, define it by density and say that the particles are bigger when they born and they get reduced over time at zero. So we have this nice effect here, a better representation of your foam, and looks pretty good. Now remember that we can render that when you go to render settings, you can do Arnold points, there is different ways. You can use a custom, and but Arnold points should be fine. Radius channel, we will use the density. Size mean it's 0.3, so we will use radius 0.3 to make something similar. We can create a camera and activate to have motion blur. Our material will be defined by this on the slot too. By now I will put something white. You can improve this with Arnold shaders and everything. It's simply to do something quite fast. I will increase my resolution and let's render that. So here we have the render. The look of the foam could be totally improved. Right now it's a white material. We can switch it for a volume material to be a little advanced, but with motion blur, it's already pretty cool. It's giving a lot of sense that these fans are advecting this water. That is what we was looking for. And we have a nice motion blur overall. And here you have the, um, the small tutorial about that. We didn't cover a lot of advanced stuff because you have different channel fields. So you can play with guide systems. You can play with, you can double click and you can export PRT files. By default, it's creating BIF. And it's kind of limited, the BIF file, because you can only load it back on 3ds Max and you only can mesh it with the, the measure of fluid that is really good, but maybe you want to do other stuff. So you can always export to PRT files and load in Houdini or whatever. It's really good. We can do things like right click, you can clone the solver to have uh, different solvers and with different settings, it will save in a separate cache. You can as well create a new solver. Um, there is a lot of things that we can do that we didn't cover yet, but overall I wanted to say that it's a very robust system. The meshing is really good. You have a lot of options and there is some stuff missing. If you compare with real flow, you will miss maybe some demons that real flow has like a spline guided force and some other uh, small stuff. And if you compare it with Houdini, you will not get more advanced uh, post cache simulation stuff, but the solver itself is really good and you can do a lot of basic and not so basic stuff as we saw here. And the results are great. So if you need to do fountains, you need to do simulations of a boat, you need to do 
quite basic stuff. It's really fun to use. It's really easy to set up. It's very well designed, the interface. I like it a lot. And I love the meshing system. And I would say give it a try. I like a lot as well the motion fields. You can use it for a lot of different things and are super helpful. So yeah, give a try to Fluids. And thank you so much to all my Patreons that help making these videos possible. If you are one of my Patreons, you will get access of the first file before starting and the final file where I create all that. So if you want to contribute for $2, you will have the files and you will see these videos before everyone else. So thank you so much for all my Patreons, helps a lot. And that's all guys, thank you so much.